Some people here tonight, the Spirit was to my heart. You're, you're coming with questions like, Lord, what's going on? Why do I keep dealing with what I'm dealing with? Why do I keep going through what I'm going through? In John chapter 2, Jesus and his mom, they're at a wedding. And his mother said to Jesus, he said, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does that have to do with me? My hour hasn't come yet. Some of you are thinking, when's my time coming? I've been sowing seed. I've been coming to church. I'm not seeing a change. You know, his mom ignored him. And she looked to the servants and she said, just do whatever, whatever he says for you to do, just do it. She was instructing the servants to do exactly what you and I have to do. We have to not just listen to what Jesus is telling us to do, but we have to do it. And I believe right there is the dividing line between an unsuccessful Christian life and the most successful Christian life. Because you're going to learn how to hear from the Lord. Some of you, maybe not yet, the Lord's talking to you and you haven't recognized his voice yet. And I believe as you invest more time in him, you're going to start to recognize that voice more. But there's going to come a point in time in your life when you're going to know that you know that you heard from God. Hallelujah. And then you're going to be faced with the same thing these servants were faced with because they had a decision. Jesus was just a guest at this wedding. It wasn't his wedding. I don't even know who the wedding was for. And Jesus told them, fill the water pots with water. And I love what it says in verse 7. It says, they filled them to the brim. To me, that shows that they didn't want to cut corners. Because the Lord can tell you to do something and you can do it almost this much. You do it all the way up to that very last part because Satan is going to fight you for every inch. He's going to fight you. If he can't get you to not do it, like pastors taught us, if he can get you to wait one minute, he'll get you to wait one hour. And if he can get you to wait one hour, He'll get you to wait one day. And if he can get you to put it off one day, he'll put it off for a week. And then all of a sudden a year goes by. And then five years goes by and you're still in the same spot like that man sitting by the pool of Bethesda. Now excuses try to come. You know, I know the Lord, but I've been sitting here for 30 years and I got no one to put me in the pool. And all you had to do was just be obedient 100%. That's all he wants is 100% of your obedience. And it says, draw me out some and take it to the master of the feast. The signs followed their obedience. Amen? The same thing's going to happen in our life. As we listen and obey, we have to be doers of the word, not just hearers only. Amen? The doers are the one that reap the results. I'm just telling you right now. The hearers, you can know the word. Listen, I know there are multitudes of Christians with closets full of teaching tapes. And they've heard the tapes. And they've read the Bible front to cover. And they've listened to the word. And I'm not trying to tell you that's not bad because we tell you get in the word, get in the word, get in the word. But we also have to tell you, you have to do what the word says. Or else you're not going to get the results of what the word tells you. 
And sometimes we think, oh, if I just get in his word and do it enough, then things are just going to start to work for us. No, it's not, that's not how it works. I'd be lying to tell you if you could just read this book every day and that it's just going to work. No, you have to read the book. You have to listen to what he tells you to do, and then you have to do it. Amen? And you can hear the voice of Jesus. You should hear the voice of Jesus. Just a couple chapters, chapters over. Verse 10, chapter 10. In verse 3, it says, To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. That's you and me. We serve the good shepherd. And it says, And he calls his own sheep by name. And he leads them out. What is he leading you out of? He's leading you out of trouble. He's leading you out of sickness. He's leading you out of that confusion. He's leading you out of that relationship that is just going the wrong way. He's leading you away from pornography. He's taking you out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. You have to know he's not a coward. He's going to do, he's going to, he's, he doesn't mind being the first one in. He's not sitting in the back just waiting to see what's going to happen. No, when he go, the reason why he leads us, it's so that he can take care of the problems in advance. He wants to go ahead and remove all the burdens. He wants to remove all the landmines. And it says, yet they will by no means follow a stranger. That means there's going to be a voice of a stranger and it's the voice the word tells us that you shall not follow. You can't follow the voice of the stranger. You're not even supposed to be familiar with the voice of a stranger. That means when you hear that voice that tells you to do something you know you're not supposed to do, you got to cast that thought down. You have to cast that voice down because if you let that voice keep coming, you'll start to get more familiar to that voice. And the more you listen to that voice, the more that voice will sound appealing to you. Cheating on your wife does not sound nice and familiar to you the first time you hear it, but the more you meditate on it, the more that can take root and all of a sudden now it becomes a stronghold and you can't even get that thought out of your mind. We're not supposed to be familiar with that voice because it says here, the thief... We're not, he came into this earth without rights. You go on to read here in verse 7. Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. That's what he's leading you out from. He's leading you to green pastures. He's leading you into that restful life. Amen? Because in verse 10, he tells us the thief, Satan, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life, that Zoe life, that you may have it in abundance. Praise God. Look at Psalms 23. You see it. You see what, what he's leading us into. Praise God. You can be seated if, you're, if you need to sit. You can sit. Thank you, Jesus. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Receive that in Jesus' name. Look, look at this. Psalms 23, the Lord, he is your shepherd. This is Jesus. He says, when he's your shepherd, you shall not want. You don't even need to want. He's going to take care of your wants. And it says he's going to make you lie down in green pastures. That's where that rest is. He's going to lead you beside still waters. You know, when the disciples, when the, this right here expect more than enough, Matthew 14, 17, he only fed those that, that were obedient. He said, tell the people to sit. And he, it says, the word said, he fed, they fed those who were seated. He says, he's going to make you lay down in green pastures. You have to be in a position of rest to receive what the Lord has for you. Have you ever tried to teach your kids something when they were just frazzled? Just, just crying 
and just huffing and puffing. No, you got to get them calmed down to a level where they're in a, a peaceful state so they can hear what you're saying. Well, he wants you in a position to be able to hear that rest, praise God. And it says he wants to restore your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. Because your mind, your will, and your emotions before you ask Jesus to come into your heart are a complete mess. They're wrecked. And that's why Romans 12, 2 says we cannot be conformed to this world. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. He's going to lead us into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though you walk, you don't have to run through the valley of the shadow of death. You will feel no evil for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, his authority, it comforts you. His authority, that staff is his name. His name should be in comfort. When you're in a discomfort place, the word says, and Johnny says, he will never leave you comfortless. He will come to you. Well, that staff is his name. It's his authority. When you feel uncomfortable, exercise that name. We tell our children, if you're having a bad dream and you feel like something's coming, you have to use your authority. You have to cast down those thoughts. Use the name of Jesus. It says, he will prepare a table before you, me in the presence of my enemies that you anoint my head with oil and that my cup runneth over. You know what I love about that? God knows to the molecule what it would take to fill a cup, right? He knows to the micro measurement of what it would take to fill a cup with water so that it does not run over. But he makes the decision to just keep going. And to just give you more. It's like it's fun for him. Like when your kids start pouring milk in that cup, and it's just they start pouring more than, than they should, it should, you should get the revelation at least one time. I'm not saying every time. Just let them do it. And just look at what, how God treats it. Like, oh, just pour it. Just keep going. Yeah, let's just get it all over the place. Let's get it all over the floor. Let's get it over everything. Because surely his goodness. Surely his mercy shall hunt you down. It's looking for you. It's trying to catch you all the days of your life. That means every day you wake up, you can expect to get hunted down by his goodness, by his mercy. That means we should not have to have another down day in our life. That's how you can, that's how you can pray and ask call, require, demand something in his word because he tells us not just on Wednesdays, not on Fridays, everyone's looking for Friday. No, he's telling us all the days of our life. This is why. Because he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. He's not going anywhere. He's in the house. He's seated at the right hand of our Father. It says, making petitions and prayers for you. He, he sets himself in a position so that when God looks towards you, he gets in the way. So that he sees, God sees Jesus, sees you through Jesus. And it just wipes away all the mess. Amen? I know this is a little different, but different is good. Amen? Let's prepare to receive tithes and offerings. Just stay in this attitude of worship. We're just going to stay here. Mike, I apologize. We only got a couple minutes. Let's just stay in this attitude. Let's pre prepare your seed. Lord, what do you have for us tonight? Thank you, Jesus. What else do you have, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Just get quiet right now. Because what I believe is happening is the Lord is going to speak to us tonight. This is what he showed me. He's going to speak to us. Some of you, it's going to be the first time you hear from God. And he's going to instruct you to do something that you might not even think you have the ability to do. But it's so important to know that most likely, he's going to call you to do something that you don't even know how to do. When I think of our youth leader, our youth minister, Mike, and the testimony of how the Lord called him to 
to lead our youth. And then naturally, he's like, there is no way I have the qualifications or the credentials to do this. And to be honest, he didn't. But that's what the Lord loves to do. He loves to ask you to do something that's going to require you to use faith. Because he wants us to rely on him every day, all day. So Lord, I'm asking you now, speak to your people. Show them, Lord. Give them answers to their questions. Give them directions. Give them vision, Lord. There are billions of dollars in the United States alone waiting to fund your vision that the Lord has given you. There's billions. There are people that do not have a vision from the Lord, but they know in their heart they're supposed to do something. And they're looking for people that are bold enough to step out by faith and to do what God has called them to do. The resources are already there. They're already laid out for you, set up. And as you walk by faith, as you live by faith, you'll collide with the blessing. Thank you, Jesus. what it says in Jude 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I believe the glory of the Lord is here tonight. Hallelujah. I believe he is able, he's desiring to keep you from stumbling. I, I believe your act to come to church tonight has just saved you from stumble. You just put yourself in a position to hear from him. You're like, man, and what's the cool thing about this is you don't even have to know what you just missed. You don't have to know what he just saved you from. You just have to know, I'm so glad. Man, it just seems like things are just going right for me. Praise God. Amen. If you have your seed, let's bless your seed. Hallelujah, Lord. We lift up this seed to you. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we can sow into good ground. 
that the finances that come into West Coast Word Church are distributed to get the gospel out, Lord. I thank you. You are not a man that could lie, that your word says that whatever we set our hands to prospers. That means we, it's prospering, Lord. The word says you are our source and our supply. That means we don't have to be our own source and our supply, that we can cast our care over onto you for you care for us, that we can be the lender and not the borrower, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that this church is filled with debt-free, more than enough, born-again, spirit-filled children of God, Lord. And that when we give, it is given unto us, Lord. It is pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men give to our bosom. In Jesus' name, amen. prayer couples if you could come forward thank you Jesus hallelujah I love this place thank you Jesus <laughs> Me too. Yeah. hallelujah thank you Lord just close your eyes thank you Lord is there anything else hallelujah you have a choice right now To be not just a hearer of the word, but a doer. And I want to encourage you, you have to take the time, you have to take the time. If you don't take the time, it's going to be given to something else. It's going to be given to TV, it's going to be given to sleep, it's going to be given to work, it's going to be given to nonsense and foolishness. You have to take it. You have to physically take the time and say, no, I am not going to give my time to that network. I'm not going to give my time to that website. I'm not going to give my time to that app. When you give your time to that app, you're sowing seed and your harvest on that gift is going to be something that's not going to be fruitful. It's going to be like the fig tree that looked all pretty, had plenty of leaves, but produced no fruit. So you have to take the time and say, I'm taking this time to put Jesus first and to get quiet and to learn what his voice sounds like and to get direction and insight from him. But then even more important, you have to do what he says. He wants to lead you and guide you small steps at a time, small corrections at a time, little by little, day by day. But if you don't do what he says, you're going to be a hearer only. And the Bible says you actually will deceive your own self. So Lord, I thank you as the word has gone forth this morning. I believe we have heard from you this evening. I believe revelation has flown freely. I believe your glory is here, Lord. I believe your anointing is here to remove burdens and destroy yokes. I thank you, Lord. Our minds have been renewed, have been changed, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that our soul has been encouraged. Our mind, our will, and emotions, Lord, are being transformed to your word. We're starting to think differently, Lord. We're starting to think by putting you first. And I thank you as we leave here, Lord, we are not afraid to ask you, call, or require, or demand anything that you've already given us, Lord. 
We won't be afraid to share the gospel. We won't be afraid to share the good news. When someone says something, we won't be afraid to interject and say, that's because of Jesus. And I thank you as we go tonight, Lord, that we are the head and we are not the tail. We are above and we are not beneath. We are blessed going in and we are blessed coming out. We are setting our hands to things and those things will prosper. Even the mistakes we've made, you can turn around for our good, Lord, it says in Psalms. Thank you, Lord. He will. He'll turn the mistakes that you've made, the decisions you've made. But you can't sit there and wallow around in condemnation that you missed it. No, you have to give it over to him and let him fix it for you. And I, Lord, I thank you that relationships are being restored. Thank you, Lord. Don't ever think it's too late. Don't ever think that your mom is too far gone or your dad is too far gone. No, you have to hope. Abraham, it said, against all hope, he believed in hope. Hallelujah. He believed in a constant expectation that it will come to pass for you exceedingly, abundantly, above whatever you can dare, ask, or think. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are dismissed. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I see the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's seated on the throne. Oh, exalted hand. The train of his robe. It fills the temple with Lord.